Hi everybody, welcome back for another episode of On the Road with the Fish Guy. I am Jay the Fish Guy. Thanks for joining us. So today, I am going to elaborate a little further on old tank syndrome. Now I mentioned this in a previous video. I was talking about bare bottoms versus sand beds. And one of the things I was talking about as far as a negative with sand beds was something that I call old tank syndrome. You might have heard this throughout the internet or talking to other uh, reefers or what have you. Uh, not everybody is on board with the idea that it even exists. Uh, and it's because of this that I'd like to go a little more in depth of what I mean and uh, my experiences with it. So old tank syndrome to me is a tank with a sand bed that has gotten to the point where the sand bed is so inundated with detritus and waste that it then stops functioning properly for one and actually can create algaes even when your water parameters test good. Now how would that be possible? You're testing the water, you're not getting nitrates, you're not getting phosphates. Why, why would this you know, dirty sand bed grow algae? Well, it's, it's kind of like localized fertilizer to a degree in that it can feed these algaes in very specific localized areas. So it's being released from the sand bed as the algaes are growing in and around the sand or even on the rock work in some cases. So not every tank with a sand bed will succumb to old tank syndrome. And I think I might have missed that a little bit when I was talking about it in the previous video. My viewpoint isn't that every tank with a sand bed is eventually going to have this problem because that's not the case. I know plenty of tanks uh, that have not ended up with this issue long term over the course of years and years, whether it be five years, ten years, what have you. Uh, I know quite a few older tanks that have done great. Now, why does it happen? Well, typically it's because of a lack of maintenance on the owner's part, the, the tank owner. It could be a lack of cleanup crew. Uh, improper stocking and feeding. So you have way too many fish or you just feed way too much. The gist is though, there's more waste being created than the sand bed can break down. So that's where you end up with all this extra waste, this extra detritus that builds up in the sand bed. Now, new hobbyists are more guilty of these issues than an advanced hobbyist, one that's been in it for a while, they've built a few tanks, they've seen it happen, uh, they know why it happens. So, that's where my viewpoint of, well, bare bottom's really a, a great way to go because it, it takes that one more thing out of the equation for a new hobbyist to be able to get off on the right foot and, and learn how to take care of their reef. So, I mean, we can say till we're blue in the face, well, they, they should just learn. They should, you know, just listen to the advice of others and, you know, read up and study and this and that. Well, that's all well and good, but nobody's perfect. The advice that you read online or from other people that they're talking to isn't necessarily always the best. So if you end up going with a bare bottom tank, you can physically see any excess waste and detritus building up on the bottom, whether it's you know behind a, a rock or you know in a corner or what have you. Whereas if you have a sand bed, you kind of get lulled into a false sense of security. If you're a new hobbyist, you're focusing on so many other things because it's all new, you know, it's all exciting. And it's easy to just look at the tank and go, well, it's clean, everything looks great. Um, and, and not actually realize all of this extra stuff is collecting. So they're doing their water changes and uh, everything seems par for the course. And then time starts going by, maybe a year, maybe two, and all of a sudden they start having algae issues out of nowhere. Water test perfect, everything looks good in the water test area, but they're just having these nuisance algaes. So, 
you're not going to necessarily end up at that point. I, I, if I spoke to that effect, I apologize if, uh, if you guys saw my other videos. So, you know, you can do a tank with a sand bed and not end up with old tank syndrome. You just have to take steps and precautions and, you know, realize that it could be an issue down the line. Um, so how do you avoid it? If you already have a tank running, you already have a sand bed, and maybe you're a little concerned that uh, it, it might be going in that direction. So, <laughs> gravel vacuuming is a great tool to be able to clean any sand bed areas that you can reach. So if you go through and you start gravel vacuuming and you're pulling out brown, nasty water, well, then there's a good chance there's there's a fair amount of waste also in the sand bed, under the rocks, in areas that you can't reach. So that would be kind of a telltale sign that eh, maybe you should do some revamping of the rock structure, how you have things placed, maybe some flow. Um, as much as it would stink to have to break down the rock structure and move it and then gravel back under it, Doing it before you have an issue is a heck of a lot better than having to do it a year from now when they, all the corals are grown and the rocks fuse together. You know, fixing it now so you're preventing issues later is a great way to go. So rock structure. Let's talk about that real quick. I've seen a lot of new hobbyists just make dense stacks of rock. So they they build it like they're stacking bricks, literally. Uh, you know, building in a corner or up against the back wall where fish can't go in, crabs and snails can barely fit, and there's very little flow. So what happens? Food and waste go in there, never to be seen again. And as time goes on and more and more stuff collect in there, you have quite the cesspool underneath all that rock. So how do we avoid that? Using as few points of contact on the sand bed for your initial layer, the better. So what does that mean? So you have a, a three-foot tank. It's obviously not three feet, but you get the idea. Stack three, maybe four pieces the size of a softball, a little bit larger, and that's your initial structure. Build everything off of that so that at the sand bed level, not as many pieces are actually flush on the sand bed and, you know, touching the sand bed. And why is that important? Getting good flow and movement around the bottom layer is ideal behind the rocks and under the rocks. So nothing is able to collect or not as much. Fish can make it back there. Maybe they can get those couple of pieces of frozen food that floated back there. Instead of them just rotting, the fish are going to eat it and make use of it. Same goes for crabs. If crabs can get back there and reach it, you know, your cleanup crew is very, very important to get those extra bits of food and waste and process it before it just goes in the sand bed and then it's a large chunk that the, the beneficial bacteria have to try to break down. That's where you start running into issues and over uh, overloading your sand bed with, with larger waste and detritus. So nice open rock structure, especially along the sand bed level, is huge. Good flow around those areas. So that's a great way to try to prevent some issues. Um, talking about cleanup crew, having a proper sized cleanup crew is huge. You know, making sure you have enough crabs specifically and I, I talked about it in another video as far as how much, how many, all that good stuff. But, it, you know, one per gallon for hermit crabs, the little reef hermits, is a good baseline. Depending on how many fish you have, how much rock you have, you may end up doing more, you may end up doing a little bit less. But usually I suggest one per gallon. So that's another thing that you can really do to help prevent any issues. Um, gravel vacuuming what you can reach for the sand bed regularly. When you do a water change, just do a quick gravel vac what you can reach for the sand bed, and that helps keep things, uh, you know, cleaned out a little bit better than just relying on just the bacteria. I know some people don't like gravel vacuuming in a reef tank. They're concerned about sucking up uh, all the beneficial critters in life. The, the big thing that you're worried about is the bacteria, and you're not going to mess with the bacteria just by gravel vacuuming. That's, that's totally fine. All the other life and flora and fauna are going to be living elsewhere in the tank. You can't reach everywhere, but uh, it's amazing how much that makes a difference, especially if you're trying to shoot for a nice, white, clean sand bed. 
gravel vacuuming regular, um, you know, will help keep it whiter for longer. So that's another great tip to try to go with. You know, common sense as far as stocking and feeding. Um, <laughs> that That's a whole nother video as far as how many fish can you have, how big, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, just a quick surmise is... Uh, you know, don't overdo it with the big fish, the tangs. Everybody wants to shove a ton of tangs and angels and high demand fish in there. You know, if you're doing a 50 gallon tank, 75 gallon tank, don't try to put four tangs in there. It's just it, it's too much. <laughs> and uh, hey, don't don't even go on the forums and tell people you have that many tangs because the tang police will come to your house and they will they will hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, not not too many big fish. Uh, common sense. I'm I'm not gonna do a you this many inches of fish per gallon. I don't like those rules. Um, again, I'll probably do another video at some point as far as stocking goes. But you know the waste in our tank is created by the fish and the food. You have more fish, you feed more food. So less fish, obviously, you're not creating as much waste in all ways, shapes, and forms. So. You know, don't don't overdo it on the fish. So I think that about covers what I wanted to do in this video. You know, to kind of elaborate a little bit more on this whole old tank syndrome, give you guys some ideas on what I really mean by old tank syndrome, and how to deal with it if you're maybe concerned that your tank might be going in that direction. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If uh, if you're not currently a subscriber. Please subscribe, give us a like, and uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. I always love hearing from you. You know, you guys uh, post up some comments and uh, let me know. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you next time.